this practice in 1969 with uh, Peke or Peche and, and others developed the beginnings of the logic design, uh, notion of problematics, conversation. This conversation is still going on, of course, the you know, collaborative rationality. It's important, a very nice paper talk about you know, requiring diverse and you know, interdependent participants using authentic dialogues. So you can sort of see how you know, the same kind of stream of conversation is permeating through, in fact, many of your presentations as well and in your work as a kind of historical uh, um, discussion around how, how, how do we deal with these things. And uh, Professor Kirpendorf will forgive me for overquoting him here. <laughs> there are quite a few papers that are sort of also suggesting um, you know, what might be done. I, I particularly resonated with these ideas around you know, conversation as, as, as kind of embedded reconstruction that we as conversational participants are in fact in a relationship with our communities and social settings in a certain sense design becomes embedded um, you know, in these conversation networks it, it's certainly interactive and, and I was particularly struck with, it, with this notion of rehumanizing I think uh, if I may um, sort of suggest that, that that's a, I think a great call for action Arguably, in an age where maybe we're a little overly focused on sort of the, the wonders of our technology and, and perhaps uh, might benefit from a, a more of a rehumanizing approach. But certainly, I think, again, many of you are working on this and sort of articulating where design might go. And again, uh, when we take a look at a sort of a, a look at this from the Sabrinani perspective, just to bring it a little bit back to the theme of the conference. I really also appreciate these notions of reflexivity um, that unifies um, this understanding of whole systems and their components. And again, this notion of, of things being embodied, you know, um, we might have a sensation that theories are somehow out there. Of course, they're embodied in us, and then in our designs, they're attempting, um, you know, to be sustainable. So, uh, again, the second order of cybernetics of thinking of ourselves and the third order, thinking of how we are observing, to observing, I think is very helpful here and is a kind of an underlying indication. But of course, this is, this is back in past in conversation theory. So, past also talks about this coherence. And I really like this idea of entailment structures that are strengthened via local cycles. Uh, giving rise to these entailment meshes, which are, of course, the structures of coherent understanding. And so notice that this idea of the cycle occurs here as well. Previously, we saw this cycle as a destructive cycle. Here, we see cycle as a, as a, as a conversational construct, as a mechanism of enabling conversation. And then, Pass talks about this dynamic coherence, the iterative refinement of meaning, as opposed to you know, knowledge that is static. And, and permanent and definitive. And uh, um, I wonder whether that's, that's kind of a, a good direction to go in when we start thinking about how might we leverage sovereignty principles uh, um, to sort of extend design. One problem with this, um, I, I think, might be this kind of directionality. You know, if we can construct these on. in of meshes by using sovereignty loops, what purposes shall they follow? And how might we know which of the meshes to, to design versus others? You know, we, what shall we strengthen for our design processes? And so, uh, kind of the Sweden, of course, Ben is here. Um, start positioning ethics as, as, as a dialogue. This particular uh, paper is in architecture, but I think more broadly applicable, where ethics is viewed as a dialogue on. Um, and this, this, there's an emphasis on this kind of intersubjectivity where you know, design is inescapably intersubjective um, and, and starts engaging the designer with the environment. In fact, the ethics starts being viewed as something that is emerging out of this process. And I think in Sweden 2015, uh, we, we see this um, kind of more clear allusion to the emergence where you know, this, this sort of the question of ethics and design, the question of directionality, um, becomes really seen as, as something that emerges out of the uh, uh, process of engaging in design and ethics uh, becomes viewed as a kind of disengagement process. So I wonder whether you know, directionality might come from here. And so if we start inverting this cycle and, and if we were to say that 
Um, could we use the Sergenetic cycles to, on one hand, have this authentic dialogue that is both interactive and reflexive and, and both embedded and, and embodied, uh, which is perhaps a tall order, but I think with a group like this and others, it's, it's possible to design you know, design methods and approaches um, uh, that, are, that are reflecting um, these broad ideas. And if simultaneously that feeds into uh, this kind of concept of ethics as design, providing directionality for these intelligent meshes, that's sort of you know, capable of rehumanizing with this same subjectivity, might that be viewed as, as a process of kind of dynamic meaning creation that can heal some of these problems with you know, design um, of you know, sustainable sort of approaches and solutions in, in complex uh, challenges? Because this might, in my view, both generate trust and engagement with innocent more talk about um, where you know you're having these diverse and interdependent participants, um, you know, with all the challenges that come out of that, because as much as we want you know diversity and, and interdependency, uh, there are challenges in terms of engaging communities, um, and, you know, within these our processes. And at the same hand, might we have the meaning creation? Um, there's, there's a kind of a form of dynamic coherence that Pass talks about in such a way. Uh, where the social fabric might become more coherent as opposed to less um, and in such a way uh, really kind of um, resolve some of these problematics. And so then I would like to contend that sustainable innovation um, is possible if the relationship between design and the environment is really kind of considered as, as a dialogical and cybernetically circular dynamic process as opposed to kind of a, an exercise in static um, design archives. <laughs> <laughs> When you, while the question's on, could you put your last slide back up? Besides, thank you. Thank you. No, no, the next one. Thank you. Sorry, thank you for the fastest. All right, well, that makes sense. Okay, um, yeah, first of all, so, you know, Bateson himself talked about schismogenesis as a cybernetic process in the introduction of the second edition of Nava, but the same didn't have the language of positive feedback when he wrote Nava in the first place. But, and, you know, one of the things he says is that, that you know, you can interpret it in some traditional systems dynamics terms that in order to balance positive feedback, you have to have negative feedback. But there's some way of, you know, the course correction, which is fine if you're talking about homeostasis, but you're clearly, I think, talking about something else when you're talking about circuitry. Um, but I think, you know, talking about the process is, is important. And frankly, if you make some would hate it, like, if you talk about things like exergy and energy, because it's Where's the point, human? stuff isn't things. You know, it's about relationships. So I think what you're saying here does connect back um, to what um, Gerald Mitchell was saying. And if you look at some of the processes he was talking about in intervention, like creating empathic connections, and I think that does fit what you were saying about the kind of dialogue you're looking for. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Reflection. I was actually thinking of those empathic connections as I was working on these slides. I think you're absolutely right. And because you think embodiment's important, and that's one of the reasons why I like it when um, frame the confidence the way you did. I think you're absolutely right. And, it's, it's, and I think the, the, the connection is sort of exergy in the system. I wonder whether it's it's a kind of an analog to those social connections and the strength of yeah, the social connections. Absolutely. It's interesting. And it's a little environment. Thank you. 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 Thank you.